Welcome back fuckers. All right, today we're going to run through a little bit of uh, trigger management. Trigger management. Okay, so as you start building your missions up and you get more advanced and more competent at making triggers to fire certain things, this list is going to get bigger and 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 it's going to end up like having to have multiple scrolls to go down the list of triggers that you've got and it's really hard to keep track of what does what. So this is just totally uh, something that I find helps and makes it useful for me. Um, and if it does help you, feel free to uh, throw this in. I'm sure some of the other mission makers do something very similar to this as well. Um, just to keep track of where you're at, what you need to do, what stuff you got to test, blah, 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 all that stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to organize this stuff into uh, sections, okay, just to make your life easier. So we're going to come in here, trigger, you're just going to call this guy. Um, I like to put eight, okay, eight, I don't know why, eight pluses, okay, then we're going to call this, oh, you passed it, tab, -da. mission start, and then another eight, left to eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. And then in the action, so if we just leave that there and we just close the mission, uh, the trigger there, this will delete itself because there's no conditions and there's no actions. Okay, no conditions, no actions. This trigger will disappear because we've, we haven't done anything to make it save itself. So you're going to come over to actions, new, and all you're going to do is just say begin playing active. Don't worry about number, don't do it, just leave it like that. Okay, so I'll show you the difference. So we're going to clone this guy. And we'll change this one to, uh, we'll just delete that. Okay, so we've got one with begin playing actor, one with nothing. Now I'm going to close, I'm just going to click out of the trigger. I'm going to open it back up. And we've got the one with begin playing actor. So if you want to do this, you've got to have begin playing actor or some kind of action. But begin playing actor doesn't affect anything in the game. Uh, you'll be fine. So that's it. We're then going to make this a different color. Okay, for some reason, I don't know why. I like green, so I use green. I'm going to put that all the way up to the top. So all it is is just a pretty much a place marker in your trigger list. So we've got mission start. So on mission start, I'm going to put all my triggers that happen, okay, in the mission start area. Uh, so now we're going to clone this, and we will uh, delete... Mission one. All right, and then we're going to move this guy down to there. All right, so now I can see mission start. I've got all my mission start triggers. So everything that happens when the mission loads up for initially, uh, all my triggers are there. So I can see what is going to load in on mission start. And then because I am doing, uh, we've got a little side mission going on here. I've called it mission one. You can call it whatever you want. Sortie one, ground, ground, uh, ground attack, zone one, whatever, whatever bunch of triggers you've got, um, you can put the next thing in. All right. And then all you do is clone again, move this guy down, and you call this, for the sake of this tutorial, we'll call it mission two. And then you can put mission two or zone two, area two, whatever you want to call it, um, into just to break your triggers up, if that makes sense. Okay, so rather having a big list of everything and you don't know what's what, this just kind of breaks it up into chunks and you can go, okay, that's all my mission start stuff. This is my mission one triggers, so everything to do with mission one, everything to do with mission two, mission three, mission finish, whatever. Okay, just makes it easier to look at and go make some sense of it. Um, another thing that you can do, uh, which I like to do as well, I'll generally leave the trigger as white until I've tested that everything works. So I make sure that this trigger, activate TACAN and uh, switch condition works, the radio item and the tank is born. I make sure all that works. Once I'm happy that everything in there is working, there's no problems, everything's fired and worked as advertised, then I'll change the color to green. So then I know that everything in mission start is complete. Okay, is complete. So I know that's all good to go. No issues with that. 
And then I can go, okay, so I've finished that. So next time you come in, because you're not going to build a mission, a complex mission in one one sitting, it's going to take you a while probably. Um, I can look at it on a, at a glance, come back to it if it's been a while and go, okay, mission one sweet, or sorry, mission start, triggers are done. I need to start chipping away at mission one stuff. And then you can go through and you know check away. Once you're happy that all the triggers are done, you can change the color to green. All right, you can even, as you complete one, fuck, you can do whatever you want. Okay, complete them, complete them. So then you come back in next time, you can look at the uh, mission editor if you have, it's been a while. Okay, okay, mission start is complete. Mission one is incomplete, but I've finished these three triggers. So I've got to, can, I've got to test my next ones. And then once you've tested them all, you can put that as green, change those back to white. and so on and so forth. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Just makes your life easier because it gets fucking confusing, especially if you're like me and you're not very uh, computer savvy. Um, the more simple and user-friendly you can make it for yourself, the better. Uh, I've also covered um, in another video, but I'll go through it now. If you notice here on my, uh, my triggers, if I use a flag, okay, if there's a flag being used, I put the number of the flag in the trigger so I can look at a glance, I can just scroll down and see which, um, which flag I'm up to. And again, if you want to be super anal, your, num your latest number flag, you can change that color and it can be like a reminder so you can scroll through. Like just say you got a heap of triggers going on and like what flag I'm up to? Whatever your latest flag is, make it a different color. So you can scroll down, you see the color yellow, and you're like, okay, number three, that's my latest flag. So if I'm going to use another threat, another flag, the flag number I'm going to use is number four. So you don't have conflicting flags causing triggers to fucking not work and all the rest of it. So it's, this is just about organizing your triggers so it makes more sense when you're kind of going back and forth between missions and uh, making your life easier if you're not going to do everything in one hit. So I hope that helps, boys. It helps me out a lot. That's how I uh, how I set my missions up. Not that I'm super in depth at uh, mission building, but I'm chipping away. I'm getting there. Um, so if it helped you, hit the like button. Let me know that it helped in the comments. If it did, share it with your mates so you can start getting some uh, missions thrown in. Do some flights together, and uh, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And lastly, but not least, I do stream on Twitch Monday to Friday at thirteen hundred Australian Western Standard Time. Uh, if you haven't. Come on by, say hello, drop in, and uh, come hang out. And watch us do some DCS things. Alrighty, fuckers. Hope you helped. Catch us on the next one.